Peter Pan by J. M. Barry. Second to the right and straight on till morning. That Peter had told Wendy was the way to Neverland. But even birds carrying maps and consorting them at windy corners could not have sighted it with these instructions. Peter, you see, just said anything that came into his head. At first, his companions trusted him implicitly, and so great were the delights of flying that they wasted time circling round church spires or any other tall objects on the way that took their fancy. John and Michael raced, Michael getting a start. They recalled with contempt that not so long ago they had thought themselves fine fellows for being able to fly round a room. Not so long ago, but how long ago? They were flying over the sea before this thought began to disturb Wendy seriously. John thought it was their second sea and their third night. Sometimes it was dark and sometimes light and now they were very cold and again too warm. Did they really feel hungry at times or were they merely pretending because Peter had such a jolly new way of feeding them? His way was to pursue birds who had food in their mouths suitable for humans and snatch it from them. Then the birds would follow and snatch it back and they would all go chasing each other gaily for miles, parting at last with mutual expressions of goodwill. But Wendy noticed with gentle concern that Peter did not seem to know that this was rather an odd way of getting your bread and butter, nor even that there were other ways. Certainly, they did not pretend to be sleepy. They were sleepy and that was a danger, for the moment they popped off or down, they fell. The awful thing was that Peter thought this funny. There he goes again, he would cry gleefully as Michael suddenly dropped like a stone. Save him, save him, cried Wendy, looking with horror at the cruel sea far below. Eventually, Peter would dive through the air and catch Michael just before he could strike the sea. And it was lovely the way he did it but he always waited till the last moment.